this might just be the best camera that Hikvision make. But like all the cameras we've looked at recently, we're going to do a third comparison review. We'll take a look at exactly what comes in the box. I've got it outside on our test rig so we can get some day and night footage. And stick around for the end of the video where I'll do a comparison of that day and night footage so we can see exactly how this camera performs and why we think this might be the gem in Hikvision's camera lineup. Let's get started. The camera we're going to look at today is a 4 megapixel IP colour view from Hikvision. Now the difference between this and the camera's little brother is that this is a hybrid camera. Now I know that hybrid doesn't always mean good things, but when it comes to these IP colour views it actually does because it means you get an infrared and a colour view camera all built into one. Hikvision used to make separate dark fighters and colour view cameras but this camera encapsulates everything. I won't be surprised within the next six months if Hikvision do away with the dark fighter and just focus on creating this camera. If we take a look what comes in the box, it's all pretty standard stuff. First out of the box we get our drill template, our user manual, which I never read, just chuck it away. We get our waterproof connector, famous plugs and screws that you'll be chucking away, and the camera unit itself. What I'll do now is I'll take the camera and I'll put it onto our test rig at the front. We'll give it 24 hours so I can get some day and night footage, and then I'll switch it over and put it on our back rig so we get to see exactly how this camera performs in pitch black conditions. Let's get it installed. Swapping the camera on our test rig is pretty straightforward. I just back off the T10 or T20 Torx bit at the side of the camera, which releases it away from the base, making sure to keep hold of the waterproof connector as I disconnect it. With the old colour views, I could have just swapped the cameras over because they would have clicked onto the same backing plate, but uh, to keep everything together, I just want to uh, put the colour view base up and put the dark fighter back away. With this camera being an IP camera, it uses network cabling, which is very similar to what you'll find in the back of the router at home. In this case, we've used Cat5 E external grade cabling. We could have used internal Cat6, but this is just what we carry on the van as standard. It's about the colour view, it's just a case of doing everything in reverse. Just put the backing plate onto the waterproof box that's outside, connect up the camera using the network cable, making sure to use the waterproof connector that we just took off, feed everything back into the waterproof box, and then just tighten up the T10 or T20 Torx bit that's on the side of the camera to secure everything to the wall, making sure to screw the ring on blast. <laughs> I've left that camera installed at the front of our shop for the last 24 hours and I've managed to grab some day and night footage off of our test recorder. You'll have to stick around for the end of the video where I'll do a full comparison because what I want to do now is move the camera from the front to the back. Now the reason in doing that, and if you watched our last video you'll see I created a test rig so that we can see how cameras really perform when the scenario around it is absolutely pitch black. The front of the shop gives us some great day and night footage but there's too much ambient lighting to really put these cameras to the test. I'll get it installed and I'll check back with you guys in the morning. So I have finally managed to export some footage that we captured from the back of the shop. We've obviously got the original footage that we captured from the front of the shop. You'll see from the timestamps on both of the footage, it's been a little minute since I've had a chance to put this all together, but here we are. Let's get into that day and night footage and then I will give you three things that I like and dislike about this camera and we'll explain why I think this might be the best one that Hikvision make. Let's kick it off with the day footage. As you can see, the day footage was captured about half past five, just after work. We are in summertime here, so the light levels don't stay really, really high up until about nine, 10 o'clock at night. But the images are really good quality. Everything transitions and moves through the, the video quite well. Signage and writing on cars, and even some number plates are, are easily identifiable and makes and models of pretty much all the vehicles that uh, drive through the junction, we can tell exactly what they are, which is what we need when it comes to CCTV. I've said this before with Hikvision cameras, but I think they do color really well. The blues look really blue, the reds look really red. Everything is just that little bit crisper. The further away from the camera you go, you start to lose that a little bit, but you've got to remember this is only a four megapixel camera. We're not dealing with 4K cameras here. So in terms of the scale from video, actual video quality, it sits pretty much bang in the middle. The day footage is great, but what we really want to know 
is how the camera performs at night. Statistically, most crimes happen when the sun goes down and that is when you're more likely to be capturing CCTV images. So if we pull up the night footage, you can see that these cameras perform exactly how I'd expect a color view camera to perform. The front of the shop, like I've mentioned before, has a lot of ambient lighting around it, which means it gives the camera a bit of a boost that it needs. There's a street light right outside and a lot of the businesses that are around us or the houses across the road from us, obviously, impact on that ambient lighting. Vehicles transition through the junction just as I expect them to and at one point in this footage there's even a police car that whizzes through and goes right at the lights up and away from our shot. The lights from the police car blind our camera and that's there's nothing I can get away from that. That's just the nature of how these cameras work. The overexposure of the police lights just mean that there's a bit of a blur as he whizzes through the junction but as soon as they fly away the camera goes back to exactly how I'd expect it which is a really, really good picture. If we now look at the footage from the back of the shop, you can see that the environment around it is absolutely pitch black. There is a tiny, tiny bit of leakage of ambient lighting from the street light, which is on the back row of our shop. But that, believe me, that pole is so far away that that lighting shouldn't really be affecting any of the area in front of that camera. It can't be casting that light that far. All the light that's being generated there is from the camera itself. There is an inbuilt LED light, which means that we actually get a really, really clear picture. The only downside to this is the distance in which the camera can see is a little bit restricted. If you look further down the alleyway, you can see it just gets darker and darker and darker as the light from the camera can't shine any further down there. There is a camera on the bargain booth next door to us, but that uses an infrared light, which actually shows shows us an orange glow on our camera. I have seen it in the past where colour view cameras and infrared cameras don't get on and sometimes shining one at another can cause them to um, distort the image but in this case absolutely fine. But all in all it performs really really well for a scenario that is pretty much pitch black. If I stood in that alleyway at night you wouldn't be able to see your hand in front of your face. But with the colour view technology and the boost from the LED light it means that this camera is suitable for putting in really, really dark places. Now, let's look at three good and some not so good things about this Hikvision 4 megapixel color view camera. Three things that I like, and kicking it off at number one, is the microphones and speakers. The camera as standard comes with a built-in microphone that you can use to record audio and stream audio to your live view using the Hik Connect app. You can also specify the cameras with inbuilt speakers which can either play a pre-recorded message that says that images are being captured for the purpose of crime prevention, or if you fancy going full Max and Paddy, you can record your own and add it to the camera. Get back, you bastard! I'll break your legs! That's me! Back, That's bastard. my voice! I'll... Now those audio alerts will come on once a motion detection, intrusion detection or line crossing detection has been broken and will play either once or up to I think about 10 times back to back. I mostly recommend to customers installing the cameras with the speakers either in enclosed areas that haven't got a lot of noise pollution or internally. So we have put one inside in a nursery before so as somebody walks down a corridor um, when they enter the building it just reminds them that they are being recorded and they are on camera. The second thing I love about this camera and this is more tailored towards the installer. I mentioned it before in the video and this camera is now hybrid so it has the ability to do infrared images and color view images. So before when I went to survey a job I would have to look at the job decide how much ambient lighting there is at night and whether it should or shouldn't have a colour view camera. With this technology, it means that I can just put one camera in, we'll leave it in colour view mode, and if the customer isn't happy with how the images are at night, let's say for instance I installed it on the back of a barn in a farm, where there's zero lighting at night, we left it in colour view mode overnight and then reviewed the footage, and we weren't so happy with how it performed, so we clicked it back into infrared mode and then gave it another 24 hours to review it. If the customer was then happy with how the infrared images looked, then we would just leave it at that. So the ability to flick between infrared and color view really sets this camera apart from both its competitors, but also the cameras that it supersedes. The final feature that I love about this SD card, which makes it a really good pick for DIYers if you know how to set up these types of cameras, is the ability to bob an SD card into the top of the camera. You don't necessarily have to buy the recorder and then the hard drive to go into the recorder. You could just buy the camera and get a 128 gig SD card, pop it in there, power it using the cabling on PoE and plug it into your router. And as long as you can know roughly how to set these cameras up, you can get a decent camera for a lot less money than it would be to buy a recorder, the hard drive 
and all the bits and pieces to make it work that way. Kicking off the list of things that I don't like about these cameras and at the top of that list is cost. I wish this camera was a little bit more cost effective and we could install more of them. Um, but 150 quid plus that, it isn't the cheapest thing to invest in, especially if you're going for multiple units. So if you're going for four, five, six, even seven or eight cameras, the costs could start to quite quickly add up, which is why the alternative PLC TVI cameras that we've looked at previously can look a better cost effective option. Although side by side performance, the four megapixel will outdo the 4K TVI camera. Sounds confusing, but I'll cover it in a later video. The next thing is the size of the camera. This camera actually hasn't got its original base on it, but you can see how bulky and chunky it is compared to some of the TVI cameras. Some people like that, some people don't mind it. I actually don't mind it so much, but I thought I'd mention it in our dislike list just so you were aware of how, this, how bulky and how chunky these cameras can look, even if they are sat on one of their bases. Now the final thing on the list, and I touched on this before uh, about the potential to DIY and install this camera yourself, but well, setup of these cameras can be a lot more complicated than the equivalent TVI cameras. You don't just screw the ends on, plug it into the recorder and set the recorder up. You can do a lot more configuration on the back end through the camera itself, but you have to have a good understanding of how networks and IP addresses and network devices work. So there we have it, the four megapixel hybrid color view camera from Hikvision. I hope you found that review helpful. It is actually my favorite camera in the Hikvision lineup. It's a great middle ground camera. It doesn't cost quite as much as the 4K camera, but it definitely outperforms most of the PLC and TVI cameras that we've reviewed in the past. If you're new to the channel, please do hit that like and subscribe button. Hit a comment below if there's a camera you want us to look at. If you can get it in, I will do a review on it. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll catch you next time.